right, everyone, this is Vishal and welcome to Chart Attack. And today we have to talk about the October uh, CPI data or the inflation numbers, which were released on uh, November 10th uh, and the day that I'm recording. Peak inflation, right? That's the big story. Uh, that's what everyone's been talking about, because, again, peak inflation technically signals a Fed pivot, right, where the central banks or the Federal Reserve in this case will... Uh, maybe hike in lower amounts, but potentially, you know, pause if they see inflation is peaking and is coming down uh, and they just basically wait it out until inflation drops below uh, the level of interest rates and heads back down to 2%. Uh, but a lot of uh, excitement from the markets, obviously with this data, because uh, October CPI came in uh, lower than the estimates. Uh, CPI for the month of October increased 0.4% and 7.7% from a year ago. Both of these data points lower than the estimates of 0.6% and 7.9%. If we look at core CPI, which is you know excluding food and energy costs, uh, core CPI increased 0.3% for the month and 6.3% on an annual basis. Uh, both of these lower than the estimates of 0.5% and 6.5%. And of course, core CPI is the Federal Reserve's favorite uh, inflation gauge, and that's the one that they take a look at. So uh, again, markets love this data. Take a look at the price action currently on the day that I'm recording this video. NASDAQ, big winner, up 6% for the day. S&P 500, 4%, and the Dow, 3%. And I think this NASDAQ chart is very important because, of course, the tech stocks uh, are the ones that get hit the most from rising interest rates because most of them aren't making revenue. They're borrowing money. They have a lot of debt. And as interest rates go higher, the debt payments, you know, uh, get larger, which eats into their financial um, statements, uh, which obviously hurts the company. And that's why tech stocks see the biggest moves uh, when there isn't any signs of interest rates rising, or in this case, good signs now indicating that the market is thinking that interest rates are going to pause, or, uh, you know, again, you see a Fed pivot. So is it too early to tell? Maybe, because again, what the Fed wants to see is consecutive months of, you know, lower inflation. So this is still a good sign, but perhaps the December, or sorry, perhaps the November CPI for uh, that that's released in December might show inflation beginning to turn up again, or you know remain constant at where it's at. So just keep that in mind, right? This is this data point is good. Um, you know, from a technical perspective, if you look at the CPI here, it does actually look like you know we have uh, created a, a head and shoulder pattern actually on CPI. And uh, CPI here is going to head lower. But once again, just keep in mind, the Fed is not going to just react on one CPI data, right? It, it needs uh, multiple months uh, showing uh, that the inflation or the core CPI is actually heading lower. So this is a good start, but uh, let's see what comes down the road. Uh, used car prices was the thing that actually fell the most at 2.4%, which helped bring down the inflation figures. Uh, apparel prices fell, and also medical services were also down 0.6%. Um, although there's like a fall in good CPI, uh, CPI in the service sector, so services, and it's at its highest level since 1982. So I think, you know, there's still some inflation uh, that you have to keep an eye out on. Uh, food costs, so food is continuing to uh, come in higher as well. But the biggest contributor to uh, CPI or you know, on the um, rising CPI case was shelter inflation, which is the leading CPI contributor for October CPI. And it rose 0.8%, which makes it the largest monthly increase since August 1990. So, uh, you know, if you take a look at certain bits of the CPI, food, rent, um, obviously I think those are still going to impact uh, the way people spend money. Of course, yes, energy prices might be dropping a bit lower, which relieves some pressures, but uh, a lot of those pressures still remain 
on food and in shelter. So I'm keeping a close eye on, you know, food um, CPI myself. And I think these shelter CPI is something to keep an eye out on uh, at a time when everyone's always focused, you know, on energy. So um, this is the data that we have. Markets, as I said, uh, love this. If we take a look at the charts of the markets, uh, let's look at the S&P 500. Very, very, very strong green candle. And it does look like we have a cup and handle here about to form. Of course, we want a close above the 39.15 level here. Uh, if we can get a close above these recent highs, which we formed in uh, at the end of October, you do have a breakout. We still have some time left for trading. So technically, we can get a close that's actually below uh, the recent highs in October. And then maybe uh, the chart continues to range. But so far, it's looking good for a breakout. Uh, the Dow, you know, it's doing its own thing, right? Like this, this thought, this index already broke out way back in the middle of October. We talked about this being this move into, uh, you know, value stocks because they pay dividends. So it's sort of like a safe way to invest your money in uncertain times. Um, but the NASDAQ is the one that I'm most interested in because I think we could have a breakout pattern upcoming if we close above 11,600. You have your nice downtrend. You have maybe a double bottom pattern here about to trigger. Uh, but as of now, right, this move, as great as it is, as impressive as it is with 6%, it's still contained within this range. Uh, so it's not necessarily a signal to enter because you want to see that breakout close above 11,600. So this is a market I'm actually quite interested in in a long. I have this on my radar. I'm not in a position just yet because I think that this breakout could trigger sometime in the next few days. Uh, but of course, you know, if we don't see those breakouts, perhaps we just continue to range on the NASDAQ and then we have to sort of factor in, uh, okay, maybe the Fed isn't going to stop anytime soon. Uh, but, you know, those are just press releases or uh, news from Fed presidents that we'll have to gauge going forward. Um, in fact, actually, there was a Fed president uh, of the Philadelphia president, Patrick Harker, who did say that he's in the camp of wanting to be in a restrictive stance, you know, somewhere north of 4.4% or 4.5%. So currently, you know, that we are at 3.7 to 4%. Perhaps there's going to be a half, uh, a 50 basis point hike in December, which takes us to 4.5%. And then from there, we'll see if... Um, the Fed or Powell, you know, will, will mention something about pausing rates or, you know, being a bit more, uh, I guess, uh, prudent, right? Just being a bit more, um, uh, well, they've already said that they're going to be looking at the data, uh, but perhaps in the December meeting, we see the Fed clearly say that, you know, okay, we're going to be a bit more um, dovish, right? I mean, they're not going to say that, but obviously they'll say that we're just, we'll keep looking at all the data. And uh, perhaps there's a case to be made to begin to raise rates either in a very slow, slow pace or pause, see what happens because we're seeing inflation uh, coming down a bit lower. Uh, I want to end off with the Dow, uh, sorry, the Russell chart here because this is a chart uh, market indice which uh, I have said in the past is a leading indicator for the major indices. So this is a small cap index, the uh, US 2000, Russell 2000, um, RUT, you know, if you wanna look at the, uh, the ETF to look at that to trade. But um, yeah, we, we find that this market leads the major three uh, indices, right? The S&P 500, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones. And interestingly enough, you know, we did have this breakout trigger on uh, October 25th. And technically, we never closed back below the breakout zone. Uh, we almost did actually yesterday, pre-CPI uh, um, uh, data, but it wasn't a strong close. And we were still, you know, within our zone because we are still technically within that wick there for that candle. But uh, as long as this remained above our breakout zone, you know, technically, uh, the Russell could continue its uptrend, which meant that there was chances of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones uh, remaining strong. And I mean, look at that price action today, just seeing buyers step in right at the support, right at that breakout zone. 
And I think, you know, these type of things are important as a trader to keep an eye out on. So definitely find a way to uh, use the Russell 2000 uh, in your trading strategies as a leading indicator. Of course, there's many other things that we can take a look at as well, but I think uh, the Russell is a good indicator and it's something that's been true and tested and I've used this many times in the past. Uh, and again, we see it work out uh, a couple of days before the CPI data. So that's it for me, folks. It does look like the markets really like uh, this CPI data, of course, a huge, huge rally. But as I said, we still need to wait for these confirmation closes on the daily charts. And on the day I'm recording, we still have about two hours left to go in trading. So still plenty of time for you know, to see a bit of a sell-off, to see the S&P 500 not close above our breakout level. And uh, of course, you know, in the weeks or days ahead, I will be watching to see if the NASDAQ can get a nice close above 11,600. So that's it for me, folks. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these inflation numbers and what the Fed is going to do. Uh, are you buying the markets here? Or do you think that this is just a bit of a relief rally on the news and we're going to continue to see indecisive markets or range markets and perhaps even a market lower because the Fed does not change uh, their tune. Let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to follow us and I'll see you guys all in the next Chart Attack video.